Hello, I want to welcome you all to The Power of Our Story. Uh, we are a place of safety and connection for those who protect us, and, and that's uh, you know current and retired. Uh, please join us if you'd ever like to. Uh, you can email at, uh, us at tposleadership um, at gmail.com, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Sarah Carell. And we are a place of safety and connection, again, for those who protect us. So don't hold back. We're, uh, there's a bunch of very caring protectors on um, our, our calls. So today I am thrilled to uh, just invite Rob Garnett to come have a conversation with us and share his story with us. He is the managing director for One More Wave. And One More Wave is a veteran-based nonprofit providing customized surfing solutions and community to injured and disabled veterans. Rob is a retired Navy a veteran of 23 years with 10 deployments as a Navy SEAL, of which six were to Iraq and Afghanistan. Following his Naval career, Rob consulted for various government contracting firms providing training, operational support, and mentorship to the Department of Defense, as well as other clients. And um, before we, we welcome Rob on to share his story and more about One More Wave, I just want to share that um, I would say it was about 2019. Uh, I was in San Diego, and I decided to go for a walk at La Jolla Shores on a Saturday morning. And I stumbled across something happening um, with people being helped to surf. And I met this woman um, and I was just asking her about what was going on. And she said that this organization was for veterans who were disabled, um, who, uh, whether they were hidden wounds or physical wounds. And so I got to actually just stand there and watch her when it was her time. And the joy on her face, the fun that everybody was having there, it was just so moving to me. And I just took a bunch of pictures and I sent it to her and I we posted on Facebook, both of us. It was just, it was such a testament to the work. And it turns out that it is one more wave. It was one more wave. Um, and so I'm thrilled to have Rob here today. So Rob, I'm going to hand it over to you. Welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks everybody else for, for joining us this morning. I'm happy to chat with everybody. Well, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your organization. Absolutely. So like you mentioned, I'm the managing director for One More Wave. We're based here in San Diego. Uh, and the way we started was here in San Diego, uh, probably during 2008, eight nine timeframe was the worst time for roadside bombs in Iraq. Uh, so there was a lot of service members coming back with some pretty severe physical injuries. And during that time, the Naval Hospital, the Balboa Hospital, would provide surf uh, therapy or surf training or a surf clinic, as we like to call it. Uh, and so several of us, while we were volunteering uh, on active duty ourselves, started helping out. Uh, and while we were there, a friend of ours came through the program. He's an Air Force person, and he, had, he was a below-the-knee amputee. Uh, and he was having a really tough time getting back into surfing um, after his injury. Uh, so we decided, hey, let's let's make him this board. And so we kind of, on our own, did some fundraising, made this board for this person, and he was really blown away. One that you know we cared enough to make him this this specialized board, and two that anyone cared. And so right from there, we were pretty hooked, uh, and that's how One More Wave really started. Uh, Alex West, a buddy of mine, he was um, he's the one that actually founded One More Wave. Uh, started selling T-shirts out of the back of a truck uh, to kind of earn money to to make these surfboards and now we're, you know, we're at board 700. Uh, so we just keep making these boards, whether it's a, a brand new board that we can buy from the store, maybe for someone that doesn't have a physical injury or something completely custom for someone uh, that might need something really adaptive. And we can talk about that a little bit later if you'd like, um, but that's what we do. We make surfboards, we take our friends surfing and we try to make it available throughout the US and even overseas. We have chapters here uh, in San Diego, Los Angeles, Santa Cruz up in Santa, uh, let's see, San Francisco. Uh, then we also have them on the East Coast. We have uh, North Carolina, Virginia Beach. Uh, we're always trying to expand. We even have Oahu, Puerto Rico, Okinawa, and a couple others that come and go. It just depends on where the people are. Um, 
it's funny. What we found was initially we thought we would make these boards. It would be magic. We'd hand it to the man or woman and they would want to just go surf and everything would be great. And we found that wasn't the case at all. We'd give the board to the person. They go, well, I, I want someone to surf with. And so that's how we started uh, the community piece. And we have a lot of online texting and group threads where people can meet throughout the month, uh, not just our monthly meetups that we host on the third Saturday of every month. Uh, so we just try to keep expanding, try to keep being available. We also reach out to lots and lots of the VA rehab centers that are throughout the U.S., whether they're substance abuse, mental health, whatever folks might need. Um, we just try to be available for when folks are able to uh, go out and get in the water. It's tough to have a bad day uh, at the beach, even if it's raining. Um, for me personally, I like uh, like Sarah mentioned, I did 23 years in the Navy, all of them in the SEAL teams. Um, at the end of my time, I was a, a mess. I had a lot of PTSD, depression, anxiety. Uh, I'd been injured in a lot of blasts. I had quite a bit of traumatic brain injury uh, and a lot of frag in my body, specifically my face. Uh, I spent a bunch of time out at Bethesda Medical Hospital going through treatment for traumatic brain injury, PTSD. And to be honest, I wasn't really taking it seriously. I was just kind of going through the motions, drinking too much, ended up going through a divorce. So when I finally came back out to the West Coast, uh, I had a couple of friends really kind of shake me loose. Um, I was really just feeling sorry for myself and really just isolating, which a lot of us do, um, especially trauma survivors. You, you kind of think you're the only one going through it and maybe you should just stay in your house and you'll figure it out on your own, which is kind of silly. It's like thinking if you break your arm, you should go fix it in the garage with some duct tape. Uh, obviously, that doesn't work. Uh, so having those friends kind of help me, kick me in the pants, uh, get me surfing again, which I hadn't done in a little bit, really kind of shook me loose and really kind of confirmed for us and me specifically how much community really means to all of us because we all really need a kick in the pants sometimes to to get off our butt and, and go do something. And so that's really what spearheaded all of this community piece um, because, you know, guys, which is primarily military, men love gear. So we think if we're going to give them surfboards, it's going to be amazing. But to mention it again, it's the community piece that has really exploded for us throughout the U.S. It's It's been pretty amazing. That's a, that is great. What does it do for you to spearhead this? No, thanks for asking. It's really um, therapy for me. I get to help other people. I get to kind of share my story. I'm very open about problems I've had um, with mental health, um, traumatic brain injury, um, drinking, all those kind of things. I'm happy to share with people and say, hey, there's a, there's a way out of it. There's healthier alternatives to other things. Um, there's plenty of people that have experienced the same thing that can that can join you and just feeling joy. Because I think we kind of forget as adults uh, that you used to like to do things just for fun. Uh, it's okay to just go for a walk or ride your bike or play guitar or paint or do something that you enjoy rather than just go to work, come home and do chores and then do it again over and over and over again. Um, it doesn't matter what your job is. It, it's okay to have fun and have some joy and uh, take care of yourself. And so I think convincing other people, especially veterans, which is who I'm around mostly, um, that they're, they deserve to, to feel good and to have someone be nice to them for no real reason. Um, most of us feel like I don't deserve it. There's somebody else that deserves it more than me across the spectrum of everybody I've ever met. I always go, oh, I, I see you guys help uh, amputees or triple amputees. I'm sure they need it more than me. And that's definitely not true. Um, everyone deserves um, what we have to offer. So I spend a lot of time convincing everyone of that. You know, I hear that a lot. Well, that person has it worse than I do. And I think, I mean, I think about your story, uh, a SEAL fighting two wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, and knowing everything, you know, so many things. I've heard so many stories. We all have heard so many stories on these calls of what it was like there. And I just, I can't imagine what people come back from. You know, we can appreciate it, but we don't know what it's like. And so I love your message that, you know, everyone deserves to be happy. And so many people want to protect our protectors. And, and we want that message to get out that, you know, you don't have to isolate um, because, yeah, that's what we've seen, too, during transition that, um, you know, trans um, when that happens, the isolation, um, you know, drinking and divorce can be such a deadly mix. And mm -hmm. so it's really great to see somebody like you sharing who has been through those things sharing um one of the great solutions out there the camaraderie 
and the being out in the sun or the rain on the waves. Um, it, it's just, it's so wonderful. And again, I saw that joy. I saw that that made me happy just even watching that. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing all that. Is there a specific story that you want to share that just something that really warmed your heart, uh, that you saw somebody experience? Uh, absolutely. Uh, one of the, the great things is always when we present some equipment, it could be a foam top board that's similar to something you might see at Costco or something that you can kind of see behind me, which is more specialized for someone that might need to sit on a surfboard. Um, it's the spouse's reactions to the change in their their loved ones. Um, my husband or my wife, yeah, they've been such a jerk the last couple of weeks. And now you gave them this board and they're out there surfing and now they come back and they're tired. They're sleeping better. They're happier. Um, they're getting to do things that we all like to do, which we forget about, which is maybe just stand around and chat, maybe talk a little trash to your friends, tease a little bit, you know, and then encourage each other. All those little things that we like in friendship, um, we like to do in groups with other people that maybe have the same background. So that's one of my favorite things. But one of my my favorite experiences, and it, it's not super PC, but I'll tell you anyways, is we, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, I go to a lot of um, rehab centers. There's one specifically in San Diego in uh near Old Town. Uh, and so when folks are going through the program, whether it's for mental health or substance abuse, they'll be there for a couple of weeks. And then after a certain amount of time, they're allowed to go out and do all kinds of different therapies that might be beneficial, whether it's horseback riding or backpacking or going for a walk or surfing. And so I was meeting a couple guys that were going to be surfing. I was going to talk to them first and kind of see where they're at. And so I met them outside. And as I pulled up, I could see that they were in a car and they were drinking beer in front of the rehab center. I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be bad. So as I get out, I see a police officer come up and he starts to talk to them. And as I come up, I start talking and the police officer says, hey, whose beer is this? There's not supposed to be beer in front of this thing. And I said, it's mine. Um, it wasn't, of course, but, you know, he told the other guys, hey, you guys go away. I'm going to talk to this guy. And he had me sit down. He started talking to me. And he goes, hey, what's going on here? Um, what's this about the beer? And anyways, as we talked, he realized it, it wasn't mine at all. And I was just trying to help the other guys. And he just left. And he said, hey, you know, these guys are in treatment. We shouldn't do that. I said, I agree. Uh, so anyways. About a half hour later, the, the guys came back out and one of the guys said, hey, you know, that was really kind what you did for us. You know, if you if I would have gotten in trouble, I would have been kicked out of this program and I might have had to go to jail. Um, and so he was really thankful. And, you know, we've become really good friends. Um, this is probably three years ago. Uh, he went on to finish the program. Uh, he went into the fire service and he's been a fire. And he's been working for the fire department up in northern California since then. And he's been sober the entire time. And he told me that he really shared that, you know, just having one person kind of say, hey, I think you're important enough to, you know, stick up for you really helped me in my sobriety and like getting moving forward in my life. And so that's always made me kind of smile to think that, you know, just that one little bit of kindness of uh, being being silly um, and telling the police officer that it was my beer really kind of helped him kind of move forward. And the other guys go, whoa, there's other people that uh, are kind for no real reason. Uh, and so that really stuck with me to, you know, just to keep at it. And, you know, if we can just help one person, it makes it worth it. Oh. Yeah. What a great story. And I think it, it, it always seems to just go back to the healing powers of community. And like you said, when somebody just feels really seen and heard and, you know, and I mean, we know on this call that there's a lot of police officers that ha do have a lot of empathy. So I think sure. when, when they were told and understood the, the issue, um, it's, it's so good to see what people can become when they're supported and they're believed in. And I, th I think that's that's one of the reasons why I just love what you're doing because I, I can totally see this as a powerful solution. So um, let's see, um, let's go ahead and open it up to everyone. Thanks for sharing all that, Rob. It's really interesting. Sure. Does anybody no, have absolutely. comments? With, oh, it looks like we have a few more people hopping on. Uh, welcome Paul and Greg and Goodell and Michael. Good to see you all. Uh, Michelle. Hi, Rob. Um, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate that. And I like that you kind of bring to light the fact that it's okay to find something that you enjoy. I think that's so hard to acknowledge. I know that for two years now, I've been out of dispatching. And I, I did it for 14 years. And so my fiance tells me all the time, hey, you're like, what do you like to do? What do you need to find a hobby? And I'm like, the concept is so foreign to me. 
that, you know, you'll almost have to relearn what you like to do outside of first responders or the veteran world, the military world. So I love that you bring that to light and you almost give permission to find something that we enjoy doing. So thank you for that. No, thank you very much. Uh, it just, I think all of us kind of need to hear that once in a while. Absolutely. Yeah, great point. Thanks. Janet. I'm just going to hop on uh, with Michelle here because um, that's one thing when I went through what I was going through, uh, I had a wonderful uh, doctor within the RCMP uh, that would meet with me because I was off work as well. And he said, go and find something that has totally nothing to do with work. And <clears throat> I took a voiceover course. It was fun, but it was totally not like a work. And when I work with somebody, I you know, we don't have a lot of waves in Alberta, but, yeah. but the thing is, is to go back, what I found is even going back to my childhood, what was the fun stuff I like to do? And I think, you know, we can trans translate that into something else and surfing for some people are that now live near someplace is something new. And the thing is, is we're never too old to learn something new. And if you want to try it, why not try it? Like you guys can help people learn. You don't have to have known it before, right? It's something that they can do no matter what age you are. And I think Denise has taught me that too. So thank you for what you're doing. Absolutely. <clears throat> Great. I um, also have to say too, you know, my, my boys, they don't like to get up early, but man, surfing, that gets them up early. They love it. In fact, mm -hmm. Rob has uh, gone surfing with a couple of our sons. So that's kind of a fun connection. Um, so, you know, I'm curious about something too, Rob, do you, do you find joy? Like if you can just help one person, does that make it for you? Or do you also have dreams of kind of a, a even a bigger vision I'm just curious, like, how do you, how does all this play out for you being part of one more wave? No, for sure. It's definitely a, a joy to just help one person. And sometimes it'll be a couple of weeks and we do that. Um, what happens a lot is what Janet was kind of indicating is when people are new with something, they can, it's really easy to be uncomfortable with it, especially um, women. Um, if you've never surfed before, it's a lot. Um, you're going to get into a wetsuit. You're going to feel weird. Every woman I've ever talked to that taught surfing thinks everyone's looking at you in your wetsuit and goes, hey, but nobody cares. We're all just trying to get in the water and be warm together. So I think what was um, really great for me, and I, I was embarrassed by this early on, is probably two years into One More Wave, I had a, a, a female Marine come up to me and say, hey, do you make surfboards for, for girls? And I thought, oh my gosh, of course, I've really failed because I just simply didn't have a lot of pictures of our veteran women surfing on our website or on Instagram. And so we changed that and it, of course, made everyone go, oh, now, of course you have women. And so those are a lot of things that I've learned along the way. It's just the way that perception is definitely reality for making sure everyone feels comfortable. So to answer your question, what, what really helps me and makes me feel good is getting to help just one person's fine, um, but also expanding. Um, we're, we're trying to move into first responders, helping first responders. It's a lot of folks, whether you're a dispatcher or climbing up a ladder or you know driving a police car, I'm sure there's lots and lots of folks and I have lots of friends that are first responders of all walks of life that would love to learn to surf and be a part of our program. So that's something that we're working towards. Um, we do a lot with adaptive athletes. Adaptive athletes um, are gonna ride non-standard surfboards or ride in a non-standard way, meaning on your knees or on your belly or on your back, however it might be. Uh, and so we have a lot of folks that have received gear of veterans that compete now uh, as adaptive surfers. Uh, and so Team USA has a team and they just finished up the, um, the the world championships here in Huntington Beach in Southern California. Uh, and I think we have eight or nine people that are on Team USA that are veterans that get equipment from us. So really exciting to do that and help those folks compete. Uh, and we're working really hard with the Olympic Committee to get them uh, in the Olympics in Los Angeles in 28. So we're trying really hard each year, the, the hosting city or country gets to try i think it's three new sports and so we're working pretty hard to try to get adaptive surfing into the olympics this time if that's case then all those folks that get to go represent us you know globally which is really cool so that's very exciting too 
That is, I love that action shot of one of the guys that went through your program that I think was missing a couple legs. Jose, he's, he's a triple amputee. Yeah, he's missing both legs and one arm, and he's the world champion for prone uh, assisted. And assisted just means that uh, we push him in, so he'll have a team. Uh, we'll take turns pushing him into waves and pushing him out through the surf to get into the waves. So, uh, yeah. no, Jose's incredibly uh, inspiring. He's the most excited person to surf that I've ever been around. Uh, he'll always make you uh, motivated to get in the water, no matter how cold it is. Yeah. That is, that is incredible. Yeah, just a look on his face. I just love those pictures. That was uh, really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, that is not motivating. I mean, geez, if he can do that with one arm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, um, Rob, thank you so much for what you're doing. I, it just, I live in Arizona. I, my brain's been thinking because I know a couple of, uh, like double amputee wounded warriors and um, veterans, but I'm in Arizona. So there's not too many close waves <laughs> close by, but I just think it's awesome that, um, you know, I've said it before, it's a toolbox of um, tools that we can use for our veterans and with PTSD and TBI and anybody who um, helps give them an avenue. I'm sure they love that part of it. Um, and I just, I admire you for doing it and for your service and, and taking your service and, and doing it to uh, help our, our veterans and in, in what they're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. And if those folks want to learn to surf, there's, there's a couple other nonprofits that I'm friends with. Um, they actually fly veterans from all over the U.S. They fly them to Santa Cruz. They put them up for a whole week. They put them up in a hotel. They have like pro surfers that are with them for an entire week. They teach them to surf. They feed them. <laughs> they bring them into the family or Ohana, like we all like to say when we are pretending we're in Hawaii. Um, and so it's a wonderful program. If, if you're interested, I can tell everybody about those. There's a ton of them. There's one on the West Coast. There's one on the East Coast. There's one in Hawaii. Uh, and they just take teach people to surf of all abilities. And they actually pick up the tab and bring them uh, even their service animals. They have tents for the service dogs on the beach so you can surf and bring your dog with you. So if anyone's interested, please reach out. Um, I'm happy to connect you. I do have a question. I went on your website. It's up right now. And it says that you're not open for any grants right now. Is that correct? Right. We so, won't open up for grants again until January. Until January. But is that what the grant would be for is... If somebody here wanted to learn. So those grants are for people to get gear. So one more way, if we don't typically teach surfing. Uh, we Once people have learned and they've been through some a clinic, we'll make a board for them. If people okay. would like to learn to surf, um, if they're here locally in San Diego, we can do it. But if they need to come from someplace else, I connect them with the other groups that have a whole train of how they bring people and take care of them. So um, the grant piece for us to just to circle back is, is strictly gear. Uh, if people want need to learn and need instruction, then I connect them with groups and we kind of get it all connected. But if they okay. reach out to me, I'll, I'll make all those things kind of, I'll make all those connections. So they would need to reach directly out to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hey, um, hey, Bob. Yep. Hey, um, tremendous program. Really awesome. I'm wondering if you know a, um, a guy named DJ Skelton and Paradox Sports. Because they they were doing um, surfing for you know wounded warriors and DJ lost like you know big pieces of his arms and legs. Um, I don't know if you know him. I do. I do know. I don't know him. I mean, I know who he is. I'm sorry. I don't know him personally. Okay. All right. Great. Um, Sarah, thanks. You're awesome. Great show. Really appreciate it. And for everybody, I was on last week. Uh, Greg Martin, uh, bipolar general. Um, really enjoyed it. It was a terrific um, event. Thanks. Good to see you, Greg. Glad you hopped on. Yeah, I think we're just stronger together, getting all these resources together and, you know, getting to know what's out there, getting to know the people who are spearheading them. Um, so questions and comments. And then Goodell, you had your hand up. I had to um, introduce myself uh, to Rob, man. Thank you so much. Um, big fan. I don't think I'm... Um, 
you know, I was Navy myself also, but I don't think I'm brave enough to go in there the waves just without a ship or something. You know, um, uh, I've always admired the the guys that do go surfing, you know, and, and it's like, Hey, I wish I could do that. Um, uh, you know, um, I'm sure there's a fear that I could overcome. Um, but yeah, I want to introduce myself, Rob, thank you for everything you, you know, you shared and everything you do, man. I, I do appreciate it. Um, what can I say? My name's Goodell. Um, I, my career was as uh, in the naval aviation side, data intelligence, uh, science, C5 ISR aircraft, the good old Comanche E2C, E2D, uh, and then special forces recruitment. So you probably saw some of my recruits uh, recruit out of uh, Arizona uh, and uh, transitioned to federal law enforcement there, um, you know, counterterrorism, special operations with Provost Marshall, USMC, and also Commander Naval Installations Command uh, over at region. Currently, what I do is uh, help various NGOs, you know, uh, fighting the uh, child uh, exploitation, CSAM, ICAC stuff. Um, and marked by that, uh, or why I do it, you know, my, my family was deeply embedded with the Mexican presidency in the early 80s and 90s. And, uh, you know, my dad worked for the Mexican CIA uh, along the Sinaloa Sonora Corridor. You know, so I was taken as a kid myself. So that's kind of why, why I'm in the fight. So survivor, but overcomer. I appreciate everything you do, man. You know, mental health is a, is a big thing for me as well. And um, just love everybody here. Uh, Sarah, thank you all for always having us. And the whole team here is, is simply amazing. Every single one of you. Thank you, uh, Rob. I'm looking forward to connecting, man. I just, if there's any way I can uh, help, um, you know, uh, you know, one more wave or, or anything that you guys are doing, uh, please let me know because I'm I'm local to San Diego as well. So, Rob, thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you, Goodell. Thanks so much for um, sharing that. There's a bunch of people, Rob, who are actually going to be at that pizza who are on this call. So <clears throat> the gathering on December 2nd. Um, and then, Paul, I'll get right back to you. Barry, I just want to welcome you on here too. Barry, is an author. Um, it, you, can you introduce yourself? Because I think people should know also about how this can all connect together. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. I, I don't know if I got the times right, but it's just bloody early in Australia at the moment, and my cat woke me up. So um, I'm Barry Zwaristein. Um, I'm my generation. I was in the Rhodesian Bush War in the mid '70s. I'm a psychologist. I've worked with the military, current serving and veterans here in Australia for the past 22 years. And um, last year, I wrote a book for transitioning veterans, which is, it's a book that's really embedded in operational terminology and understanding. So it talks to the folk in their language to create change in, in transitioning. So working with Sarah to create a conversation on a Saturday morning, working through the book, because the book forms a journal experience that you can actually journal in. And my goal with the book is that it becomes, what was my book becomes your book, becomes your family's book, becomes our book. And it becomes a process for guiding you all forward into understanding. So slowly working towards that, um, putting some videos together uh, with Sarah's help. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But thanks for the time. Thanks, Barry. It's good to see you. And then Paul up here is the one that can help with some of the tech stuff. Um, and I just, again, I want you all to meet each other because like Barry, for instance, he is going to have that group. It's Friday night, our time. He's 18 hours ahead. Um, and just, you know, really powerful messages in how, in, in helping people process, you know, our, our warriors process their transition and their journey. Um, again, we are stronger together. Um, and the, let's see, so that's going to happen in January too. There was, I had another thought about that, but I'll get back to that. Um, oh, I was just going to say too, what he writes, his perspective and the lens that he sees things through resonates <clears throat> so deeply that you have people like Tom Satterley wrote in his book, Delta Force, Tom Satterley, John McCaskill, um, Doc Springer, you know, whom uh, all of our warriors really trust as a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Um, There's so many people that have a big voice out there that wrote in the foreword of Barry's book. Um, 
it sure made sense to me, but I'm not a warrior. So the ones who are actually boots on the ground that have served, it really resonates. So I'm so excited that we're going to have this opportunity to have you, Barry. Um, Paul, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just briefly. Uh, Goodell won't say this uh, on his own behalf, but I will. And that is that he has done some pretty amazing things for humanity, um, both out of the country and in the country. And I'm not going to get into the detail because some of it is quite sensitive, but um, uh, he, he is certainly to be appreciated for that. Making me blush, Paul. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, that's great. Goodell is a huge servant. Well, everybody on here has been incredible servant leaders. And I think, Rob, this is why we like to do this is just the networking part too, because we have seen so many things happen just by the introductions and the connections, um, you know, people being on documentaries and uh, just all kinds of things. So uh, Michael, can I put you on the spot? He's our favorite cowboy Bronco rider. Um, no, Mike. No, bull rider. I don't ride Bronx. Bull. That's for that's for sissies. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Wait a minute. I apologize. Um, so My Michael, you started things. I, I'm sure this is kind of resonating with you too and what you're starting. Do you want to introduce yourself? I guess since you put me on the spot. I totally put you on the spot. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, Michael Parker, uh Marine veteran. Um, I started Second Chance Rehabilitation Ranch, working with veterans, first responders, uh, getting them out into nature. Uh, I had my struggle with suicide, I had four attempts back in 2016, and um, kind of ironically, Hawaii was my saving grace, uh, Paul. Um, started getting out into nature, hiking, kayaking, working with horses, all of that kind of stuff. And I realized it was, it was really beneficial for me. And, you know, I was like, if, if it helps me, how many other people would help? Same with surfing. Surfing is very therapeutic. I love it. Unfortunately, I'm in Arkansas and there is no waves to catch here. Uh, so I'm jealous, but Sarah can attest. Uh, I went, I went surfing with her boys when I was out there, what, two years ago. Uh, so I love surfing. Um, any, anything to get guys out um into, into nature is great um and i i was gonna say this earlier but uh we kind of shifted gears um anything you know i always encourage people even if they're not interested it, it doesn't seem like something they would enjoy uh like i'll use an example of uh, a former nfl friend of mine uh i got him on horseback for the first time he was like i don't want to ride horses i'm not about that and I was like, dude, just give it a try. If you don't like it, don't have to do it again. And it turns out he, he loves it, right? So, Goodell, I know, I know you're, you're like, I, I'm too scared to, to surf. But, hey, who knows? You might, you might enjoy it, man. Give it a shot. Because you, unless you try it, you, you don't know if you like it or not. Hey, man, surf is for real men, brother. I never claimed to be a real man. Just saying. <laughs> Thanks, well, Goodell, bro. I, I'm if you well, Cadell, it, let I can us build know. a surfboard for you that looks like a little ship, if that would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I, I'd rather stay out of the water. No, but I, 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 I have been wanting to do it, you know, and, and it's like, I think it's now the time, you know, why not? You know, I think uh, if I have the right teacher, maybe, you know, I, I, I'd love to try it, but I don't know how long I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to last in the water, you know, looking everywhere. <laughs> Well, if you do, let us know. I'm sure, actually, you probably won't, but we would love to cheer you on. Oh, wow, um, thanks. <laughs> um, oh, and I meant, yeah, that you would, I mean, I would not want people, I would not want an audience if it was my first time too. So that's what I meant by that. I'm sure you will try it. Um, so anyway, Rob, tell us, what what would you want people to walk away with with this whole thing? If you haven't covered it already, what would you just want people to remember, um, try, um, what, what do you want us to walk away with? No, I think I would kind of harken back to what Janet said, which was, you know, just find something that you like. And if you can't remember, think about what you liked when you were a kid, you know, whether it's going for a swim, 
just do anything. I mean, the, the magic of surfing isn't just that it's surfing, it's because it's something that makes you focus. You have to focus on what you're doing. You have to pay attention to the waves, the water, people around you. What we always say is the ocean doesn't care. If you don't pay attention, the ocean will slap you in this. I'm sure the horses will do the same thing. Uh, I'm sure, you know, going shooting skeet, if you pull the, you know, the shotgun away from your shoulder, it's going to let you know all those kind of things that you do, you have to focus. And so I think that focus lets our brain and, you know, your, your heart kind of heal, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, whether it's depression, you're thinking about something that happened or anxiety, something that might happen. Um, you are in the now, whether it's, you know, racing cars or surfing or doing archery or pottery. Um, I think just finding something that's going to work for you and it, it could just be volunteering. Um, I would encourage everyone to find something that, uh, makes you happy just for a little bit. It's okay to go have fun. That's a good point. And I am curious too, in, in your whole process, is there, do you feel like there was a time where you feel you felt maybe there is a moment of peace? Like, like it really started to click in. Was it, was it weeks, months? Was it maybe, you know, how fast did it help you heal? Uh, pretty immediately. I would say weeks, absolutely. Of getting out and regularly doing whatever it was uh, for me at surfing. I, I absolutely helped me kind of check out from other things that I was worried about or things that I was planning on worrying about, uh, and just into focusing on the now, uh, and then how that can expand to getting other people to feel that same way, or at least providing the opportunity. Um, so it was pretty quick for me within a couple of weeks and then months, and then it's easier, you know, it's like riding a, a bicycle, you know, it's harder to start than it is to keep riding. And so, you know, once I keep going, uh, it's just kind of spinning that wheel a little bit, putting some more energy in, uh, and getting a lot back out from everybody else's stoke. Yeah, that's uh, a great that answer. Where on Oahu is your um, surf program? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Oh, where on Oahu is your surf program? Uh, at White White Plains is typically where we go out, right outside the base there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And and I did hear you say it just seems like it just if people can just push themselves to take that first step. Yeah, that, just go that, make that one thing. And even for us, people might come and not even get in the water. They just might come and stand there and go, oh, everyone's just like me. <laughs> everyone's just friendly. Uh, we have, uh, often people think it's gonna be all amputees. Uh, and that's for sure not the case. Thank goodness. Um, maybe 10% of people or less are amputees that need help that are veterans. Um, we get. Probably in San Diego, probably 40% of the people that come are not veterans at all. Just people that from around San Diego that love to surf and want to come help and hang out and just enjoy the ocean like everyone else. Uh, and so I think, like you said, it's just that first step, go and check it out. You don't have to jump on the water the first time. You can just go see what it's about. Um, go to the horse ranch and see what it's about. Um, go do whatever it is. But just making that first step, getting off the couch, as I say, uh, is it's so gratifying to get out and do something that you enjoy. Yeah. It's, I mean, just how life-changing that whole, your whole life could actually change if you just take that first step, that first Absolutely. simple step. Gosh, could we just shout that? I mean, that's, that is so huge. That one first brave step. Um, yeah, that, that's really powerful. Um, is there any other comments or questions before before we say goodbye and thank Rob. You know, Sarah, what I wanted to say was that the great thing about what a lot of these guys doing is that it's a bottom up approach. And my problem with a lot of the folk working with guys, men and women carrying stuff is that they start at the front of the brain and then think they can work down. And there's a big mistake on that because often what you get the guy saying is, yeah, I understand everything, but I'm still stuck. So, you know, the fact that we do have people really pushing bottom-up approaches and also approaches based in nature and within the body. It's um, well done, guys. We need more of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Which gets back to that first step, doesn't it? That that first action step. Um, yeah, I really appreciate this talk, Rob. I'm so excited about what you're doing. I mean, you know that I've been a fan and uh, just I'm really grateful for what you're doing. No, thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, I always like to meet new folks, so I'm excited. If anyone's in San Diego, come see us. We'll be surfing on Saturday. Love to have you. And can you tell people how to reach you? Yeah, so our website's just onemorewave.com. 
Uh, we're also on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, whatever you fancy. Uh, if you're messaging those, any of those, it's me or my wife, One More Waves. Uh, I'm in my garage. This is the gigantic building that One More Wave has, uh, our house. Uh, so <laughs> everything gets done out of here. So no matter who you're reaching out to, it's actually coming to me or my wife, Lynn. Uh, so please reach out. Um, if you want to get on the website, you can look for locations. Like I said, we have monthly meetups throughout the U.S. So maybe there's one near you. You can just show up. Um, there's no start and stop to our meetups. There's not like a, hey, we're going to get there. We're going to circle up and chat. We just kind of have a, a permit on the beach for a couple hours. Come, go. Uh, fa families are welcome. Um, the only thing we don't do is we don't have in a, we want to keep it family friendly. And for California, uh, non cannabis happy so we're drug and alcohol free when we come just to make sure everyone's comfortable so whatever you're doing on your own that's that's your business but we don't want to do it here and make sure everyone's comfortable so it's it's just a meet and surf have some coffee um meet some new people maybe talk a little trash and uh, maybe get in the ocean awesome okay thank you so much robin thank you all for your comments